the Insta360 Ace Pro 2, a new iteration of a well-loved camera. But if it's your first time using this camera, how difficult are the settings for you to use? And if you're already using the first iteration, how familiar are the settings? I'm going to talk you through all the settings on this camera in this video. Let's go. Okay, so starting there now, purring on the unit itself, on you have on the back of the screen here quite a lot of information. Now let me just see if I can get this exposed easier so you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. Okay, so if you're already familiar with the Insta360 Ace Pro original version, the menu structure hasn't changed that much. So that's going to be an advantage if you're coming from that to this, because you'd already know your way around the menu system. But as a general rule, I find the menu system quite self-explanatory and also very intuitive. So what we turn it on, this is exactly what we'll see. So I'll use my uh, pen here so that you don't see my finger getting in the way. And Actually, by the way, it's important to note that the focal distance from this camera here is 30 centimeters. So I have this purposely set up with a cutting board because it has all of the grid lines for me to be able to show you something in a moment about the fields of view. But nonetheless, this is what we will use for this example. So on the top left hand corner here, you have the amount of record time that's left. So for this here, it says it is five hours and four minutes. Next to that, we've got visible to show us that we're in HDR. And then down here is telling me right now, I'm in video mode, I'm shooting at 4K 24. And I'll get to that in a moment once we go into those. Here is a quick zoom button. So hitting that here, it will zoom in the image for you. Here is the different field of views. So up here is the shooting profile, and then here is what's remaining on the battery. So if I go here and show you what's remaining on this battery, just by touching it, it will give me a visible cue. So I've got 65% left on the battery. Now, if I first of all go into here on the shooting settings, so you can click on this here, which will get you into all of your settings. So on the top left hand corner, we've got active HDR. So quickly turning that on or off. And the beauty of this menu system actually is that if you've got something on, it will be in blue. So it's much easier for you to see if it's on or off. So I've HDR turned off there, turn it back on again, and now you see it's on visibly. Stabilization, clicking into that, we see that we have the options for off, standard, or high. So it's very good as well because it gives you this information. So suitable for stabilization in moderate activity such as road riding and then on high if we move to that here suitable for stabilization in extreme sports such as mountain biking so for me uh, standard I think would be perfectly fine then on here we can change our ratio so you'll see it goes back to the screen so you can see okay now if I go to from 16.9 to 4.3 you see you get more of a square profile so it's not drawn out you see the edges that are here aren't being used and then I can go to this one which is 2.35 to 1 so it's kind of effectively a widescreen letterbox effect but for the most part 16.9 I think is what most people will use and I'll leave it on that. Clicking back on ratio brings us back into where we are and then here you can set up your duration so I've got it set to infinite but you can set it to 15 seconds, 30 seconds, 1 minute, 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 1 hour, 2 hour, 3 hour. Now, um, I'll talk about the recording time uh, in a separate video, but it's interesting that you have you know, up to three hours that are here. Uh, you won't get that, but you probably will if you have uh, it connected into power. So it'd be battery would be the one that would stop you from that point first and foremost. So anyway, back into this. So now when we look here, we go to 8K, that massive 8K resolution. And with 8K re resolution, you can now shoot 24, 35, and 30 frames per second. Now going into 4K, that's will go from 30, it'll go right up as far as 120, which is amazing to have that quality in such a camera like this. So you can go 120, 160, 50, 48, 30, 25, 24. To the next resolution down again, we go to 2.7K next, and we can go from 24 
all the way up again as far as 120. And then if we wanted to go for ultra slow motion, we can go 1080p and we can go right up as far as 240 or all the way down as far as 24. So quite a lot of options there to choose from. And again, all of these on the left hand side here remain exactly the same. Now I'm going to put this back up to the infinite time, which I imagine most people would use because you record for what you want to record it at. Okay, so we swipe back down from that, that gets rid of that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this back into uh, 4K and I'm gonna add 24, which is my preferred speeds. Now, that's that area here. Next button is if we click on this here and again, we press 1X, it goes and zooms in to 2X. Now, that is not going to be uh, sharp because I am so close to this board behind. But again, it's for the visual representation I wanna give for these grid lines so you can see exactly how much it zooms in and zooms out. Now, on the bottom then as well here, you've got your field of view. So by default, I think it starts off at action. So if I go into action, and now this will be important because you can see these grid lines here, which is purposely what I've done to use this here and this here. So on action, we can see all the way out to the sides of this. So we can go all of as far as here. If I go into mega view, now it crops in slightly. We can still see the edges on the uh, cutting board, but there's not much bowing as well, which is quite interesting. Now we go to Ultra. And again, not much difference between Ultra and Mega, but you see on Ultra, you're getting this curving. So it's, it's curving on the edges here, so they're not getting straight lines. Next one, if we go to this, which is unwarp, so it should be the same thing, but it should zoom back in for us, which it does. So now on these straight lines, we can see they're relatively straight. Linear, I think, which is what most people will use, will go into this here. Now you see you get perfectly good uh, grid lines and there's nothing warping. So I think that's gonna be the one that most people would use. 45 degree angle is that you can move the camera. So if I just turn the camera like this, these will not change in the image. So that's good up as far as 45 degrees. And then the final one here is 360. So if you want to be able to move the camera quite a lot, it will not change the horizon for you. So that's remaining the same. And that will go all the way as far as 360 degrees. But a big difference if we look from here from linear, which again, which I say most people would use, and then going all the way to the action, you can see you've got quite a large field of view. It goes as far as 157 degrees, which I think will be quite a lot if you want to get a lot into the frame. But bear in mind, you do get that bowing around the edges. Okay, so coming back out of here. Now what we look at is if we quickly swipe left or swipe right in the image here, so we swipe left or right, we can then change from all of the different settings that are there and it will just keep going, keep going, keep going. So we were in video, I'll go to the right right now. So now we've got pure video. So pure video is actually very, very good because that will give you much better conditions in low light. And I'll put up a couple of examples here of what that looks like next. Low light footage test and the microphone is specifically from the camera. So no other audio being taken from that. Looks quite bright using pure audio, pure video. Next, again, quickly putting our finger and just sliding from pure video to freeze frame video. So again, you can take freeze frames and, and take a number of different images, but you see you get a whole different field of view here. Next one is time shift. So if you want to be able to do some uh, hyperlapses and such like that, here is a time lapse, standard time lapse. Here you can use it as a dash cam, so you can put it up in the front of your car. Loop recording, it will continue recording at 4K 60 and it is for three minutes and then it'll keep doing that over and over again. Slow motion, so by default it's set at 4K 120, which is extremely, extremely good to have in a camera of this type. Star lapse, again, I haven't used this yet, but I imagine it's going to be quite good because you've got the options to be able to take images of the night sky. And if you click in each of these, by the way, you can then change the settings that you have for them. So if I go into here, I can now say, okay, I want to have star trails, 
okay? Or I can have Star Trails video, Star Trails photos, or I can do a time-lapse video as well. And I can pick whichever one I want to do there. And I think if I go into this here and I go into Star Lapse, you'll see here it's giving me 12.5 megapixel images. If I go into Star Trails, it's 12.5 megapixel images. And I can also decide if I want to have pure shot or raw. I should actually use this. So pure shot or raw. Again, I can change the ratio so I can go from here into 16.9. So again, you know, you get that flexibility in each of these settings. Okay, so we are now going to go back into here. Burst photo, so you can take up to 30, 30 images in one second. And again, if you go into this here, you can then set up what your settings are going to be like. So I can say, okay, what format do I want it in? Do I want it in JPEG or do I want it in pure shot? And pure shot is one of their own versions of a higher resolution image. Okay, swiping to the right again, interval, so standard interval timer, and then I can go into photo. Now, interestingly, with this camera, you can shoot in 50 megapixel images. Now, I think it's doing a big bit of pixel shifting. I'm not quite sure if it's actually giving you a 50 megapixel image, but nonetheless, it's still powerful to be able to have that. Now, if I go into the settings on this here, I can shoot this in pure shot and raw, or pure shot, or I can shoot in JPEG. So I generally would shoot, as a photography point of view, in raw, so I want to use this one, so it's gonna give me two files. Uh, then, when you go back into that again here, you can then decide if you want 50 megapixel or 12 megapixel. And you can also set on a timer as well to be able to have a countdown timer. You can change your resolution from four to three to 16.9, 4x3 is generally the format that you would use. Now looking at this, if you notice at the bottom of the screen, you're getting quite a lot of bowing as well here. So it's on an ultra wide view. If I go into 16.9, it condenses that down slightly, but you still have the bowing effect on that image. I'm sure that'll be able to be resolved in post, but that's just one of the things to bear in mind. Okay, so finally, I think if I go back here, I'm back into video. Now, also, if you go back into this here, and up on the top, you have some presets. So I can click on these presets, and now I can set a vlog, which is 4K, 24 frames per second, 16.9. I can go on biking, which is 4K, 60 frames per second, 16.9. I can use it for diving, which is exactly the same settings. I can then use it for skiing, which will give you 120 frames per second at 4K. And I can use it for surfing, which is 4K, 120. 20 frames per second, 16.9. Or I can go in here and I can create my own version as well, just by clicking on this. And I can actually edit them or put in my own customs as well, which is quite interesting. And as you can see, up to 20 customs here, I think is quite a lot. So for the most part anyway, I'm going to go back into mode. I'm gonna leave it on video. And now we have there. So that's everything from the main screen. But there's two other things here that you can see. So number one, you have this profile, okay? so important to be aware that if I go and I, I'm touching on the screen and I swipe on the screen, it is going to just change the modes. But if I take my finger from the far right hand corner off the screen and swipe onto the screen, like this, I can then get into my profiles. So if I click on this, I can have my standard profile or I can go for a vivid profile or I can go for a Leica natural. I can go for a Leica vivid. I can go for a portrait pro profile. So again, it tells you exactly what they're doing here. So I don't know if you can pick it up on that screen, but it's low contrast, cold white tone, suitable for portrait shooting and daily life vlogging and recording. Next is there from this is film. So classic blue green tone, suitable for street photography and daily life vlogging. Next is vintage, so I can have a retro yellow and green tone suitable for outdoor exploration, daily life and vlog recording. I can go to urban, so retro warm turns, tones. I can go to night, so your green and orange tones and a blue tone screen, street scenes and outdoor night scenes. So that's good that you can change those and I generally will keep it on standard anyway. Now next in that is you can change your exposure compensation, so you can make it darker here and you can see that the resulting image is going darker all the way down as far as minus four, or I can make it all the way up as far as minus four as well, so you can see it's overly bright. But for the most part, I think not leaving it on um, the center, which is zero, is probably the easiest way to go. Now on next one here is going into auto, so this is my white balance, so it's at 6,000K, okay, so you can change that, but I've actually just put this into 
uh, pure video. So if I go back into video now and I show you these, you've got more options here. So I can go in and again, do the same thing, go in and, and use my autos, my exposure evaluation, my white balance on auto. I can have face priority, anti-flicker, and I can then sharpness on medium. So I would generally prefer to have this on low. So if you keep it on low, because otherwise it just makes the actual file too crunchy. If you go on to high, it really makes it look better on a small screen. But if you're going to be editing this, better off to go for low sharpness and then you can change that later in post. If it's too sharp, you can't bring that back down later. So we'll go back out of this now and it's an interesting thing as well is that I can now go in here and new to this version of the camera, as you see here, is log. So I can now shoot in a log format and if you look at what it does, it makes it very, very flat and that gives me all of the detail that I need to be able to change this then in post-production. It's something that professionals would use. It was something that was missing on the Ace Pro 1, but now it's here on the Ace Pro 2. But for now, just so you can see the screen, I'm going to leave it off. I now have full control as well, so I can go into manual here and I can change everything. So I can go in here and turn on my uh, log on that if need be, or I can change my ISO. So I can bring my ISO all the way down as far as 100 or all the way up as far as 6,400, but for the most part, let's leave it on around 640, uh, 500 will do. Um, then I can go in here, change my shutter speed. So generally, if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, you want to have your shutter speed at double that, so 50 for argument's sake here. So clicking on that, that will make sure that you don't get any uh, wrong shutter speeds and wrong footage. Uh, I can change my white balance here again, so it's on auto at the moment. I can change that down as well. Exposure evaluation uh, and then uh, my sharpness as well that I can change as well. So that's everything that's there. Again, look, there's my 1x, so I can press this and I can go into 2x. But again, we've, we've used that one anyway. Now, then from the bottom, if you swipe up, that will get you into all of these settings. From the left, if you swipe across, it will give you all of the files that you've recorded for playback. And again, if you swipe right from the outside, it'll give you those additional controls. If you swipe down from the top, this is where you start getting into all of the menu structures. Now again, the beauty of here is that if something is turned on, it will turn blue. So if I click on this here, you see that quick capture is now turned on. Now quick capture is that if the camera is off, you just press your record button, it will power on and immediately start recording. The next here is um, your uh, lock, so you can lock your screen so that it doesn't move. So if you want to be able to keep your orientation the same. Here is uh, the next, which is quite interesting, is gesture control. So you can, holding up the palm of your hand, you can start or stop videos or you can do a peace sign and it will take a photograph. Very handy, um, but there's another version that you can use which I think would be better. This is imaging AI, so this camera has two AI chips um, and this is one of them that you can go back in here and it'll give you highlights. And if you record something, you can go straight in and say, okay, create a highlight from that. That will save you a lot of time from editing if you want to build peace quick stories together. On the other one that we have here, if I go into pre-record, so what that will do is it will save the video for 90 seconds before you press the record button. So that's important that you can capture any uh, that you want that you don't want to miss. And then you click on start recording, or I can change that to 60, 30 or 15 seconds. So that's quite interesting for me. Looking at this one, next one, it's endurance mode. So this will uh, limit the use of some functions, but it will extend the battery's life. So I don't know, some people may be able to use that if they're expecting to do something for a long period of time. Here, if you wanted to go into underwater mode, so again, optimize that for underwater stabilization and distortion correction. So delivering more realistic and natural footage. And then over here is I can lock the camera so I don't press any buttons accidentally behind. So if I try and do that, it will tell me that it's locked. So to unlock it, I need to swipe up. Now, going back into the settings again, and on the other page, swiping this way, we have more. So clicking on this one here, this is our grid. So it's very handy if you want to be able to frame up your images. So if I come back out of that, you see now that the grid is there in the image. Swipe back down, swipe over to the right, I can turn that back off. Next is voice controls, and this is quite handy because you can now have this to be able to take a photo by saying take a photo, or start recording, stop recording, you can mark that file, or you can shut down the camera. So if you are away from the camera without having to go over and press the button and walk back, you can use your voice to be able to do that, which is quite handy. 
here is when you can use the built-in mic or you can also connect a wireless mic so i have the mic 2 and i use that to be able to record on this which is quite handy so i don't have to worry about the audio now this camera again does have the improvements on the a new microphone that they've put on the front of the camera but for the most part if you can get a, a wireless mic it's going to give you overall better audio so we come back out of this here is screen brightness so you can bring the screen up or down i just have it bright for you guys because i'm recording right now here is that you can have a timed capture so you can set it up that it's going to do a recording uh, at any time you want it to be if you have a Bluetooth remote control, so I know that there's a watch unit that you can get for this as well, you can connect it up via that. And here you can have your headphones, so you can see that it's using my, seeing my mic there already, so I can connect that up if need be. And then finally, we have our settings settings. So if I go down here into general, so you can change the sounds, so they can be high, medium, low, or mute. So I just keep it on medium for now. Uh, my indicator light so you've got the indicator light you see up here and there's also one at the front the one at the front actually if it's in blue it's in standby if it's in red it's recording the camera will give you a vibration so you know you've pressed a button or something is doing it you can have it that it will wake up via bluetooth you can set the screen to auto sleep you can set to auto power save your battery and then you can actually turn on and off the front screen display now on this camera the front screen display is does not show you what you're recording it's more of a settings uh, in, in, information panel but it does still work and you can turn that on and off if you wish handy feature with this is that you can long press the record button and it will cancel your recording or you can then again kick click on this touch to activate so if the screen is off you touch it it will activate it and then you can also double tap the screen for a zoom as well also so that's in the general settings Next, if we look at customizable power button, so I can click on this and power on top and I say, okay, when not recording, I can switch the mode, which is the button on the side. And whilst it's recording, I can click it to mark a particular file. Next is image settings, so anti-flicker. So you can get a choice here between 50 Hertz and 60 Hertz. Video encoding, so you've got H.265 or H.264. H.265 is a better format. I would recommend using that. You've got your bit rate, so the higher the bit rate, the better the quality of the file. So most people will keep it at standard. I have it at high right now because I'm doing some tests in it, but I think I'm going to leave it on standard. And that's everything in your image settings. Next after that is power off charging. So if it's off, you can charge only, or you can have it powered on, or you can have a charge and record. So if you want to get extended recording times, this is where you will change that. Next is time code. So you can add in your time code. So you can have a time code generator. So if you want to match up multiple clips, which is very interesting and good to have. Wi-Fi settings. So you've got Wi-Fi that you can connect this up to your phone, or when you connect up to the Insta360 uh, app, it will automatically connect up as well for you. You've got the SD card, so right now I've got zero gigabytes of 233 gigabytes remaining. Now standard, change my language, change the date and time. You can recalibrate the gyroscope. You can reset the opening tutorial, reset the camera completely, or going into the certification info. So uh, from that, if I come back out of these here, and I go back in again to my settings, that is everything that you have in the overall menu structure. Now, uh, overall, like I said, on the side here, you've got your single one power button, and then on the top, you have your record button, and then on the front, if I turn it around here to give you a look, I'm in settings in the background at the moment, so you see that you've got this blue light telling it's in standby, and then you've got, all you have is your lens. If I come back out of this, <coughs> And I go back into shooting mode, so you can see I'm at 4K, 24 frames per second, and I've got 9 hours and 46 minutes of record time at that rate. Now if I look over here, you'll see directly the same thing. So 9 hours, 46 minutes, 4K, video mode, 24 frames, 16, 9. Your battery level is here, and now if I was to press record on the top here, now this button will go, or this light will go red, so now I know visually that I am recording as well on that. So. That's all of the menus on the new Insta360 Ace Pro 2.
So that's the entire walkthrough of all of the settings, all the functions on this incredible camera. Now be sure to tune in for my next video where I'm going to talk you through some of the key features and I'm going to show you how they're working as well. Thank you very much as always for watching. If it's the first time on the channel, please do hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment and until the next time, schlange folgt.